Hello and welcome to another episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today we're going to be exploring a powerful tool in the world of image editing specifically designed for the internet and social media, the TK8 Web Sharpen Panel. Join me as we take a deep dive into this amazing tool and discover how it can enhance the sharpness and clarity of your online photographs or images like never before. So sit back, Grab a cup of coffee. Let's get started on our journey of editing mastery for the web. The joy of editing with Dave Kelly starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday, always my favorite day of the week, and I hope it is yours, too. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to look at the wonderful web sharpen panel found inside of the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. You'll find it in the combo as well as the CX panel, but we're going to take a deep dive into it today. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to understand how to really use it. And once you learn how to use it, you're going to love it. I guarantee you. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. Before we dive into the web sharpen panel, I do want to say this up front. It is for web sharpening. In other words, social media, your websites, things of that nature. It's not designed for output sharpening for prints. For that, you need products like uh, Topaz Sharpen AI or Nix Pro Sharpener, or you can use like Lightroom Sharpening for output sharpening, but you don't want to use the TK Web Sharpen for that just so we get that clear up front. You're gonna find the web sharpen panel inside of the combo panel as well as the CX panel. Now I like to have both of my panels opened up. And when you do that, you get some added bonuses. What I like to do is have my TK8 CX panel for actions that I can keep open all the time. And then I just use the combo panel for the buttons and the different features I need off of it. What I want to show you is I'm going to drag my combo panel out here onto the screen just so we can really see what is going on here. To find web sharpening, you're going to click this button right here, this triangle or pyramid. Click on that and you're going to find your web sharpening here. Now, this is a very elaborate panel and it does a lot and I'm going to try to break it all down for you today. And as I said at the beginning, hopefully by the end of this uh, tutorial, you'll be well on your way to using this panel and I know you will love it. And don't forget, please comment, ask questions, like, share, subscribe. This really helps the joy of editing with Dave Kelly grow. And when you do that, I really appreciate that. Let's start up here right at the top. Now, again, the combo as well as the CX panel, you can do the same things. It's just a little bit different layout here. But right now we're going to look at the combo panel because it's a little bit larger. So we can see a little bit better here. But at the top, you'll notice it says web sharpen. And you see this little checkbox here. It says all images. Now what this is for, if you have like several images opened up, four, five, six, however many you have opened up in Photoshop, you can go ahead and sharpen all of those images all at one time if you check this on. But we'll get back to that later. But I'm starting at the top, as I said, and I'm going to work down. Now right here... You can enter your pixel height and width, okay? So whatever size you want. And then you see here where it says opacity. This is the opacity for the actual web sharpening. It defaults at 50. Now, it depends on your image where you want to set that at. Now, that value varies depending on what kind of equipment you're using, whether you're using a really high-end DSLR camera or an iPhone. On an iPhone, you may want to really bump that opacity capacity up so you can get a lot more sharpening than you would actually need with a better higher quality camera. Once I start sharpening images you'll see how that works but I just want to go over everything here. Now you'll notice this right here this is resolution pixels per inch 72. 
To be quite honest with you, it doesn't matter what number you have here. Just leave yours at 72. It won't matter because really what matters is the pixel size, the height, and the width. This is what counts most. This doesn't really mean much of anything, to be honest with you. So just don't touch that one. Leave it at 72. You'll be fine. You can add a prefix to the beginning of the file name or a suffix at the end of the file name. You could give your files a name. If you have several images opened up, you know, when you have all images checked on, if you put a name, like say you're a wedding photographer and you have about five, six, seven, eight, nine images that you want to sharpen all at once, you click all images, give it a name like Smith Wedding, and then it'll name those files like Smith Wedding 1, 2, 3, 4, sequentially down the line. So that's a nice feature. Then we have this feature here, Extra Sharp. If you have an image that you feel is not quite sharp enough, you can go ahead and check on Extra Sharp. And I'll demonstrate all this for you. And then you can apply an action. Like you'll notice right here, see mine says large frame. You can put an action there, say if you want to put a frame on all the images. Now this one is very important right here, sRGB. I recommend that you always have that checked on because you want to use sRGB. GB for the internet. That's what the internet likes. That's what computer monitors like. Whenever you're putting images online on websites or social media, you definitely want to use sRGB. So leave that on at all times. That's very important because if you don't check that on, it's going to put the uh, profile that you uh, are using on your image itself. And that may not translate well over to the web. And I also want to point out, if you don't have anything in these fields, prefix, suffix, and name, if nothing is typed in here, when you go to sharpen your image, it will have sharpened at the end of the file name. That lets you know that your image was sharpened for the web. And then if we look over here to the right, if you have a logo watermark, you can add it here if you have this checked on or you could check it off. And then again, that's the same for the action. Now, under action, if you click the little gear icon, it opens up and it gives you a list of actions. And here's my large frame action. And that's what I use. I just clicked on large frame and then click that on. And then it says right there, large frame. So if I have this checked on like this, and if I run this, let me just go ahead and click fit here and you'll see a large frame goes on there. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to X out of here. I'm not going to save this. I just wanted to show you how that worked real quick. Let me go back to my sharpen. And then uh, same with logo. If you click on this gear icon, you can come here and choose, you know, find out where your watermarks are living. In my case, mine's living inside of here under watermarks. And we have all these different watermarks. By the way, I'm going to give you a watermark. It'll have my logo on it. You can replace my text with your text. So you can experiment with watermarks. I might have some time to show you at the end of this video how to make a watermark. I'll have to see how it's going, but that's what you do there. And then like right now, if I click apply, you'll see there's my watermark right down there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And that watermark is a smart object, as you'll notice here. You can do things like change the color of the text, you know, do some beveling and embossing and that kind of stuff with layer styles but i'll show you later and then we have four presets that we can use now my first preset says yt that's for youtube that and you can have two characters here and i make thumbnails all the time for youtube videos and i have to sharpen them for the web and at a certain size so i use that preset but the nice thing is if you have both of these panels opened up you actually will have um eight presets which is kind of nice and you can do an auto save and an auto close now you don't want to use these features until you get your web sharpening just the way you want it you got to make sure your image is at the right sharpness and so on and so forth if you're going to process two three or four of those right there it's nice to have that auto save and auto close feature and you'll see why but we'll wait for that for a little bit and one thing I want to point out about auto save and auto close, you definitely need to use these together because if you save it, the image will, the sharpened image will stay opened here. So you want to make sure you have auto close so you don't have to keep closing all those images because once you've saved them, you're actually done. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, see here where it says two, click on two and that tells the web sharpen panel where to send your images to. 
and then your browser will open up and you just have to, you know, point it to where you want it to go to. So that's important. And once you do, in my case, for my YouTube thumbnail, it goes to the desktop. But I'll be demonstrating that in a little bit. And then we have as here. And you see there's a drop down. Right now it says JPEG 12. If I click on this drop down, you can do different things. You could save this as a PSD, TIFF, PNG. But quite honestly, I would use JPEG. Now these are different qualities of JPEGs here. And... Now you get a lot of options here from JPEG 1 up to JPEG 12. Now the panel defaults at JPEG 10. And for most people, that's going to work. But if you want to go to max quality, you can use 12. But I would say, I think you're going to get your best results if you stick anywhere between JPEG 8 up to JPEG 12. And all this works with this auto save and auto close feature. It only works with that. But for me, I think the default setting of JPEG 10 works really well for my needs. And the smaller numbers will save you on some file sizes. Now let's see what these buttons do. Vertical, horizontal, fit, and this button right here. This button right here, I'm, I'm going to try to cover it later. It doesn't really, you don't really use it that often, to be honest with you. But we're going to save that for now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this watermark. So I'm going to click on this smart object. And let me X out of here and click on my trash can. That gets rid of that layer. And now let's go back into Web Sharpen. And we're going to look at vertical, horizontal, and fit. Now, vertical honors this height, 2,000 pixels. And horizontal honors the width, which is 3,000 pixels. And fit will honor if the image is either a horizontal crop or a vertical crop. And you'll see that shortly. But first, let's deal with vertical. By the way, I am working with just stock images here. These images aren't that big. Let's see how big this image is right here. Let's click on size and we can see that this image is 5,128 pixels wide and it is 2,884 pixels high. And right now with the web sharpen panel, I have the height set at 2,000 and the width set at 3,000. So it'll shrink in size a little bit. Let me click cancel here and open up the web sharpen panel again. But I do want to say this, when you're doing web sharpening, you're generally taking your large file and shrinking it in size so you can put it on the web. And the web sharpen panel takes care of the resizing as well as the sharpening, which will give you beautiful results for your images that you're posting in social media or on your website. Now this image is a horizontal crop. So if I click on vertical, it's going to honor the height of 2000 pixels. So let me click on vertical. And now let's click on size. And we can see here, it is honored the height of 2000 and it changes the width accordingly. So it's gonna be different here, it depends, but it will honor the height because that's what I chose. So let me click cancel. Let me close this one up here, don't save. And now let's try, let's go back into the panel. Now when I click horizontal, it should be 3000 pixels wide. So let's click horizontal and it's sharpened. And you can see my layer stack over here of all the things that are happening here in the web sharpening. But let's take a look at the size and the size now is 3000 pixels wide. So it has honored that. And now the height will be whatever it determines it to be. And it will always maintain your aspect ratio. So let's click cancel here. Let me go ahead and close this sharpened image up. Don't save. And now let's go back into the web sharpen panel and click fit. Now, what do you think it's going to do for fit? Well, this is a horizontal image, right? So I would think it should honor the width of the image. So let's try it. Let's click on fit. And now let's click on size. And as you can see, it is honored the width of the image of 3000 pixels wide. I'm going to click on cancel. So that's how that works. Let's X out of here. Now let's try it on an image that is vertical. So I have this image right here, a vertical type crop. Let me move this over a little bit. And now let's go back into the web sharpen panel. And if I click on vertical, it should honor the height of 2000 pixels. So let me click on vertical. Let's click on size. And there's the height, 2000 pixels. Click cancel. Let's close this one up. 
and don't save it and now back into the panel the web sharpen panel let's click on horizontal now it should make the width of this image 3000 pixels so let's click on horizontal and you notice it's much much bigger let's click on size and the width is now 3000 and the height is up to 4500 so it honors the width so that's important let's click OK or not OK let's just click cancel we don't need that and let me go ahead and close this image out here I'm not going to save it and now what do you think happens if I click on fit now this is a vertical type crop so it should honor the height it should be the same as vertical so let's click on fit and now let's take a look at the size and yes it is it is 2000 pixels high let's click on cancel I'm gonna go ahead and fit this to screen by clicking this button right here and now let's take a look at the layer stack you notice we have a group here called TK web sharpening and this button on the panel 50 opacity represents this layer group at 50% now we can change this if we want more sharpening for instance um, if I take this opacity and bump this up to 100% I don't know if you'll see that on the screen but the image gets much sharper so you can change that and if you need it to be more sharp when we ran the uh, panel we could have had on extra sharp but I'll show you what extra sharp is doing see this sharpen layer 2 here this is one of the sharpening layers you don't really have to worry about what's going on here because this panel does it all for you but let's click on this layer see this layer mask right here this is protecting the image from getting halos and things like that and if you didn't have extra sharp checked when you did your web sharpening you can go ahead and just come to this layer and let me go ahead and X out of the web sharpen panel and see this X right here we can disable this layer mask that's all extra sharp is doing so let me click this X and now the image gets much sharper because we've disabled this layer mask which is protecting the image from getting halos but if you have an image that has a lot of detail and you have a pretty good camera you know you could probably if you need to get that extra sharpness I don't use it really hardly ever to be honest with you but if you need it you can click that X and then if you click the X again you will enable the mask now I would recommend now remember it defaults at like 50 but I would recommend if you need more sharpening work with opacity first and see if you can get the sharpness out of it and then if you can't then come up here and disable the mask and that'll get you that extra sharpness and if it's over sharp then you can pull back on the opacity if you need to let's go ahead for now and close this image out I'm not going to save it let me open up web sharpen again and remember this extra sharp just click on this if you know you want it extra sharp click on that I generally never do that and in this case let me click fit and now you can see that mask is disabled now you can always come and re-enable it by clicking this X not well you see what I just did there I'm glad I made this mistake I am on the group so let me click that X again make sure you click on this layer and then click the X very important sometimes it's good for me to leave mistakes in so you can see because I know you'll make them too now let me go ahead and close this one more time don't save let me go ahead and open up the web sharpen panel again now let's talk about this auto save and auto close now before you ever check off auto save and auto close I would highly recommend that you experiment with the sharpening on your images and the auto save and auto close is really good if like for me I have that you YouTube thumbnail that I make and my settings are stored in this YT preset that preset stores the dimensions and I also have auto save and auto close checked on I'm gonna click on YT for YouTube and you can see it's 720 pixels high by 1280 pixels wide auto save and auto close is here and I have it set to go to my desktop I have the opacity set at the default setting of 50 it doesn't really matter what the resolution PPI is and I'm not using a prefix or suffix and I have the name thumbnail here 
it's going to my desktop. Now remember, if you click the two, it'll let you, it'll open up your browser and let you tell it where you want it to go. But I chose my desktop. And I also have sRGB checked on, and I leave that on constantly. I never shut that off, and I highly recommend that you don't do that either. I will be showing you how to make a preset shortly, but let's pretend this is my YouTube thumbnail. It really isn't. But my YouTube thumbnail is 720 by 1280 all the time, so in my case, it doesn't matter if I use vertical, horizontal, or fit. So I'm just going to go ahead, just for the heck of it, and click on Fit. Now watch the screen as I click Fit. See it bouncing around, changing? What happened is, is it saved this image over onto my desktop. It's already sharpened, and it's going to have the name Thumbnail on it. And now I can just upload it to YouTube as my thumbnail. That's how that works. Now, this is not my thumbnail. And somebody will say, well, that doesn't look like a YouTube thumbnail. It's not, but I, I'm just showing you how that works. By the way, it also auto-closed the image, so it saved as well as closed that sharpened image, which is a real time saver. I'm gonna open up the web sharpened panel again. However, it will honor the 720 height because this is a vertical crop, so it will be 720 high. If I would have used horizontal, it would have been 1280 wide. Okay, or if I would have chose fit, it would have been 720. So it always honors the aspect ratio. Now my YouTube thumbnail was actually 720 by 1280 pixels. So it doesn't matter if I choose vertical, horizontal, or fit. Now to change things up, let's move over to this other image. I'm gonna go ahead and make a preset and show you how I would do this. Right now I'm on preset one, which is my YouTube preset. We could keep it there for now. We're gonna program it into this two slot. But first off, I want to make a two by three aspect ratio size. So what I'm gonna do is for the height, I'm gonna type in here 2000 pixels high, and I'm gonna choose for width, I'm gonna choose 3000. So it can be no wider than 3000, no higher than 2000. I'm gonna use the default setting of 50% for that group on the layer stack. And as I said, the resolution doesn't really matter. I don't want a prefix or a suffix or a name. So I'm going to double click on thumbnail and just delete that. I'm not going to make it extra sharp. I'm not going to use an action. I want to make sure I have sRGB on. I always put that on. Now, I don't want this to auto save because I have to look at this and find out if all the settings are right. So you have to start out with the auto save and auto close off. Now these two always work together, especially if you want it to automatically close after you've done an auto save. But for now, we're not using that. And I also wanna use a logo. I'm not gonna check this on yet. I wanna sharpen this first and see if I get all those settings right first. This is a horizontal crop, so I can just click fit. And when I do that and click on size, you can see it is 3000 pixels wide, which is right. I'm gonna click cancel here. Now let's open up the web sharpen panel again. But first off, let's look at our layer stack over here. Now this is at 50%, and it looks really good. I may want this a little bit sharper, and you may not see this on the screen, but I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up. I'm gonna bump it up to 100%. Here is the before web sharpening, and here is after. So again, before and after, and hopefully you can see that. So I think that's good at 100%, because remember this is, uh, stock image and it wasn't that big to begin with. So it needs that extra sharpening. If I wanted more sharpening, I could click on this layer. On my CX panel, I can close out the web sharpen and we can click this X to disable that mask. And now we can see it's a little bit sharper, but I don't think I need the extra sharpening. So I'm gonna click the X again. And so now I know for this preset, I want this to be at a 100% opacity. And this probably goes without being said, but the only time you really need to make a preset if it's something that you will use a lot. If not, you can just do your web sharpening on the fly for each image and you don't need to make a preset. But I'm just showing you how to make a preset and the same principles apply for doing web sharpening on the fly. You just wouldn't make it into a preset. Okay, I know I need 100% opacity, and I know I don't want extra sharp, so I'm gonna leave extra sharp unchecked and opacity 
I'm going to change this to 100%. I'm just typing in 100. So now that's going to be at 100%. Now I do want to add a watermark to this preset. So let's come up here to logo, click the gear icon, and here's where we can choose a different watermark. And I have one selected right here, the joy of editing camera one dot PSD. If you didn't want that one, if you click on choose, it'll open up your file browser and you can pick a different one, but I want to use that one. So I'm going to click cancel and then you can position it, you know, left bottom, middle bottom or right bottom or in the middle or on the top left, middle and right, whichever you want. But I want it right there in the middle. I'm going to start off there and see if I like it. You have to pick an edge offset. Now mine set at 30 and I think that's good. That's 30 pixels up from the bottom. And then we can choose a size. Uh, I like to start out at 100% just to see what it looks like in opacity at 100% just to see what that looks like. Now I'm using embedded. Now if you had a bunch of images open up at once, you can use linked. And if you change something on the watermark, it would get changed on everything. But I'm just using embedded here. And that's generally what I use unless I'm working with a bunch of images at once, which, which is not that often to be honest with you. But if you like to sharpen a lot of images at once, you may want to use linked. Now let's see what it looks like. Let me click apply. And whoa, it's really big and the opacity is too strong. So let's delete this. I'm on this layer. I'm just typing my delete key on my keyboard. And now let's resize it. I'm going to take it about half the size and see what it looks like. And maybe pull back on the opacity to maybe right around here. Let's apply again. And you know what? I do like that. Now we could keep experimenting and changing things up. You know, we may say, what's it look like on the top? So I can delete this and let's try the top position and click apply. Now it's up at the top. I'll delete that again. What does it look like on the right side? Bottom click on this circle and click apply. And there it is over there. And I kind of like it there. It looks pretty cool. And if I'm satisfied with that, I have everything set up for the watermark. I can X this and now we can save this as a preset in this slot two right here. So don't forget, this is very important. You got to check on logo or you won't get your watermark. And the settings that I set when I click on the gear, that is the settings that will be applied to that. So let me X out of here again. So now all I need to do is I have my height and my width and my opacity. Everything is set up. I'm not using extra sharp. I got my logo turned on. I'm not auto saving or auto closing. And now what we can do is save this as a preset. To do that, you just command or control click on the number two here or whatever preset slot you want. So I'm going to command or control click this and this dialog comes up. The preset has been saved. You may give it a name, but two characters is the maximum length. I'm going to give it a name of H for horizontal and M for mark or watermark because I'm going to make another preset and it comes in very handy to have one preset for watermarks for horizontal images and one for vertical images because they work a little bit differently and I'll show you shortly but we're going to click OK. So now I have that watermark saved HM for horizontal watermark. So let's go ahead and close this image that we were experimenting on and let's try out the preset and see if it works. So I'm just going to click on the X and say, don't save. Now what I can do is go ahead and just click fit because it's a horizontal image. So it will be no wider than 3000 pixels. So I'm going to click fit. And there you can see there's my watermark just where I positioned it. And you'll notice here's that smart object right here. And remember I set it up for 65%. And if I click on the web group, you can see that's at 100%. All thanks to the way we set up our preset. Now there's still some other things we can do. If we go onto the smart object layer, the preset gave me 65%, but nobody says I can't turn it up to 100% or make it less than 50%. So you could do whatever you want there. And the other thing you can do, you see this button right here. This is the transform button on the combo panel, or here it is on the CX panel. If you click that, you could take this and drag it anywhere that you want on your image, or you can even resize it. So you have all kind of adjustments, even after you ran the sharpening action with this watermark, you can do a lot with it. So just bear that in mind. Now that the image is sharpened and we have a watermark on it, we've got to save this out 
and that's where this button comes in. But let me open up the web chart and panel one time. When you're doing auto save and auto close, that's where it takes this JPEG number into consideration and the sRGB. However, when you're going to save it yourself by clicking on this button right here, we click it. You'll notice here that it remembers your last settings and I had convert to sRGB on here. But as far as the quality, it's at 100% maximum. And to get that JPEG 10, I have to do it myself and click on very high or I could use the highest quality. You can choose between different file types and I always like to choose JPEG here. And make sure you have convert to sRGB on. And down here you can see the actual image size is what we made it with the uh, web sharpen. And then right now you have some choices here. You can see the original image or the optimized image. Now my image was already converted to sRGB, so I could actually leave that unchecked because it's already in the sRGB profile. And then we also have two up and I can go ahead and just pull this image up. Now the image on top would be the way it looks on my monitor and the bottom would be the sRGB optimized. And then all you need to do is click on save and the dialog for your file browser comes up and you just tell it where you want it to go. And in my case, I would want it to go in here to my web sharpened uh, folder. And so I just click save and it's saved. So that's important. You have to save it. Now here comes a workflow speed up for you. I'm going to shut this sharpened image down. I'm done with it. So we could close it out because we don't need it anymore. I'll just say don't save. If you come in here to web sharpen and you have a preset already selected, like say this is the last thing I ran, I X out of here and I left Photoshop, okay? I left Photoshop, shut Photoshop down, come back in, pull this image in here and I want to run that last action that I ran the last time Photoshop was open. All you need to do is command or control click this right here. And you'll notice there it is. There's that sharpened image with that horizontal watermark preset on it. And all I had to do was command or control click this. So that's a real quick way of speeding up your workflow. I have one more thing to show you, and that's how to make a watermark preset for a vertical image. So here's a vertical image. So I'm going to click on web sharpen. I'm still using this HM preset, but I'm going to alter it and put it into a new preset. And I'll show you why I already have the horizontal one saved, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on fit and we know it's going to be no more than 2000 pixels high. It will actually be just 2000 pixels high when I click on fit and it puts the watermark down here and it looks a little small and I don't like it. So we could come and open up web sharpen again and click on the gear icon for logo. I do want to position it on the right side or do I? Maybe I want it in the center. But say I always use my positioning on the right side. So let's just leave it there because that's how I did the horizontal one. So we're going to leave it on the right side, but it's way too small. But So let's delete this smart object here with the watermark on it. So let's resize it up to 100% and let's leave the opacity at 65% because I think that was good. I'm still on embedded and I'm still using that same watermark. Let's go ahead and click apply. And while well, that's too big, okay, so let's delete this smart object. Let's try it again. So let me take the resize and pull it back. Let's try around 70 and click apply. That looks better. So I like that. So now I can save this as my vertical watermark. So we can X out of here. So everything is set just the way it needs to be set. The opacity, the resize, the offset, and the position, and the watermark I'm using. I'm on embedded. Just X. And now all we need to do is command or control click on three. And I'm just going to give this a name of VM for vertical watermark and click OK and X out of here. And now let's just close this image and try it out and see if it works. So I'm going to say don't save. All right. And remember my shortcut. If I hold the command or control key down and click on here on the web sharpen button, it runs it for me automatically and there it is. Now remember all I need to do at that point is click on this save icon. And remember I told you it remembers your last setting. Remember I set this to very high. It's on JPEG, convert to sRGB and there's the size of the image and just click save and you're done. So click save and it gets saved away. Tell it where you want it to go and I want it to go into this web sharpened folder. Click save and I am done. 
So I'm done with this. I don't need it. Now I could save this with all the layers intact if I wanted to, but I don't really need it. So I'm just going to click on the X and say, don't save. Because remember when I clicked this button, I saved it to my folder called web sharpen. This video got a little long, but there's tons of things you can do with this web sharpen panel. And it's amazing. As you can see, there's certain things that I didn't get to show you today, like how to change your font color on your smart object for your logo watermark. And I didn't show you how to keep sharpening out of skies and mainly keep it on the foreground. I didn't get to show you how to make your own watermark. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments section below, because there's some extra features that I can show you and I'd be happy to show them to you. So let me know in the comments section below if you want that. But I basically covered all pretty much everything that you need to know inside of this web sharpen panel with a few little extra things, which I think will make things even better for you. So let me know. By the way, there are also PDF notes for you. There are notes from Tony Kuiper for his web sharpen panel. You can download those. You can also download my watermark, which is a PSD file. You can go in there and change the text to your name. There's even a camera icon on there. So you can go ahead and use that so you can download that and then try out watermarks for yourself. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.